alkynes, alkynes, another functional group that is a hydrocarbon. The only difference here is that you have triple bonds, triple bonds. The generic formula for an alkyne is CnH2n minus two. So if I have C4, H will be two times four minus two, <clears throat> which is two times four is eight minus two is six. So that would be C4H6. And you may write this as, let's figure it out here. right here. Five hydrogens and of course, five on this side. And then of course you have the sixth one right here. And of course you have your triple bond. Alkynes are very, very electron rich, highly electron rich. simply because you have a triple bond and this triple bond is in this nice graphics right here. You can see that you have a sigma bond. Sigma bonds, of course, are on the outside. You also have two pi bonds, two pi bonds based on these p orbitals. You have four p orbitals. All of these are p orbitals. And of course they hybridize and they form again two pi bonds as you can see right there. So the pi bonds can be easily broken and replaced with more stable sigma bonds. And the pi bond is a site of reactivity in a, an alkyne. That's why they are reactive. So you can see now you can have reaction go not only once but twice because it can go from a triple bond to a, a double bond and then from a double bond to a single bond or single bonds. There are two types of alkynes. You have a terminal alkyne and you have an internal alkyne. Now, be aware and be careful of this. At the end, right here, you have a carbon. Okay. There's a carbon at the end, although it will delete it, but there's a carbon right there. So how would you actually read this? You would read it this way. There's a carbon right there. So you'd say one. Okay, not sure what's happening. See that that would be two. That would be three, four, five. Okay, and six. And then here you would start right there. So that, that would be one there, that's two. It won't let me write over the image. That's what's happening. You would have two right there. It's going to delete it. So make sure you be able to see it. Three, four, five, six, and seven. Here you have one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now. Why is it drawn like this? The reason why it's drawn like this is because it's linear, which is 180. You 
some students may draw this like that. But the problem with this is that this one does not show that it's 180 degrees. It's a linear molecule. So sometimes unofficially people do it this way, but this is the correct way of drawing it. The nomenclature, the nomenclature. We're not going to belabor this, but now we will do a few examples where you have alkyl by itself, alkyne with an alkene, a double bond, and of course, where we have them all with an alcohol. You follow the same rules. However, if you have a double bond, you give the double bond the lower number, but the name still ends with Y and E, ein. Of course, the alcohol gets the lower number than the double bond, so the alcohol is the highest, but we'll get to it. Let's actually start with something that is based on the alkynes by themselves. So here's your triple bond. So you start highlighting from here. Need the longest chain. Right there. You count one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Once again, there's one, there's a carbon right there where the triple bond starts, where it ends, four, five, six, and seven. Of course, you have a methyl group. So we start with that, we say four methyl. And now we have to indicate where the triple bond occurred at the second carbon. So we say two, seven, seven is heptine or heptane, but of course we change the ending to Y and E, heptine. Four methyl, two heptine. And the second one, you have to be aware of this, is that you have to actually number starting from the double bond, but the ending of the name, the, the high parent hydrocarbon is still an alkyne. I realize it's a bit confusing, but these are the convention uh, rules. So we go one, two, all the way like that. And you count from starting from here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Of course, we have a methyl at the fourth carbon. So we start with that four methyl, but you need to number your double bond, so that's at the second carbon, two. Now, this is where it gets a little bit weird. You've, saw, you've seen that with the alcohol and the alkene. But what you say is, since we have eight, that's octin, so it indicates that the double bond is at the second carbon, octin. The triple bond is at five, y, N E for methyl to octen five Y N E or ein. Now, if you have an alcohol, you have to, of course, number from where the alcohol starts because it gets the highest priority. So you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
three right here, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Of course, you have a, a methyl and you have a chloro. So we start with seven chloro. Five methyl. And now we have to start with where the double bind occurred. The double bond occurred at the sixth carbon. And this is eight. So we say six octen. Where did the double bond, the triple bond occur? At the third carbon. So watch how this is different. You say three YN, you're not done because this indicates where the triple bond is at. This indicates where the double bond is at. And finally, you have to include the alcohol. Two O. So that's what it means. It's weird, it's different, but again, it's systematic. There's nothing uh, for you to simply uh, be confused about. I know it, it can be, uh, it's entirely new, but again, it's not uh, meant to be confusing. It's meant actually to help you understand or tell the reader where every functional group is at.